The Mystery of Divine Unity, the Eight and the Nine. We've uh, heard references to divine unity. And before this course is over, you're going to hear divine unity coming out your ears. But it's a beautiful, deep uh, ocean of understanding. I'm going to use, I'm going to uh, deal with one aspect, the divine unity of the manifestations of God, as Baha'u'llah calls the shots. If you would start us out. So we'll start with quote 22 from the Course. Contemplate with thine inward eye the chain of successive revelations that hath linked the manifestation of Adam with that of the Bab. I draw attention to the term inward eye. You can read what, you know, various names of manifestations. But with the inward eye, you want to understand the linkage. In other words, he's saying you have to contemplate the linkage uh, between these manifestations, not just that they existed. And we're going to get deeper into that. Quote 23. The law of God is divided into two parts. One is the fundamental basis which comprises all spiritual things. That is to say, it refers to the spiritual virtues and divine qualities. This does not change nor alter. It is the holy of holies, which is the essence of the law of Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Christ, Muhammad, the Bab, and Baha'u'llah. Now, I would suggest that there's several things that are being said here, but basically the idea, there's a consistency between these manifestations. Now, you notice in quote 22, it refers to the manifestation of Adam with that of the Bob. Well, you know the present culture does not see Adam as a prophet. They see him as the first human being. In a sense, they're right, except that what it would be is the first manifestation of what a human being is capable of. The first one where the breath of the spirit was awakened his potential. Evolution and God's guidance through evolution brought us through the matrix of nature to where we became physically capable. We were here. We had a soul, but it needed awakening. But we had to go through a process to where we became, shall we say, to the age of accountability, where humanity had evolved far enough now to start picking up some responsibility, not just become, um, shall we say, a part of nature, but to step outside into a more spiritual perspective. And so Adam is the first, followed by Noah, followed by Abraham, Moses, Christ, Muhammad, the Baba, Baha'u'llah, now, this particular group of manifestations are not all the manifestations. That's not what it's claiming. It's claiming these have a connection. They have an inner mystery about them that is unique. It doesn't mean better or only. It means unique. A, a wisdom is hidden in the relationship between these eight manifestations. I draw attention to the term eight manifestations. We'll get into why eight later. Now I have a, a question to set the stage also for what we're going to delve into in this topic. Within the Baha'i faith, um, we have the concept of the nine major manifestations of God, which include manifestations manifestations such as Krishna, Buddha, and Zoroaster. And I noticed that they aren't listed in this list. So if you could explain why this list is comprised of these names and omits Far Eastern religions. First of all, because Baha'u'llah draws our attention to these and says there's a, a connection here. There's something to be profoundly understood. And if you'll notice, these are all directly sequential. 
they are one follows the other, follows the other, and has been historically recorded by the Jewish people up to the time, of course, of, of Moses and Christ. And then we know as Baha'is that this continued on. There's a, a message in this successiveness. It's not to say there weren't manifestations elsewhere. And just because those nine are mentioned, this is kind of like a contemporary idea of, of that all these major religions have value, but they're not successive. This is where we went one step too far because they don't succeed each other. But there is, interestingly enough, a second group of manifestations that are connected. For an example, we know that Krishna founded the Hinduism and that Buddha came out of Krishna's revelation and brought a new revelation. They are sequential. I believe this gives us a pattern to know these patterns exist. And it's interesting to note, this is called the Semitic lineage. Uh, the, 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 uh, starting with Adam, Noah, Abraham, they are all of the Semitic line. But there was an interesting group of people that came out of Europe, or you might say East, the western part of the world, and they were called the Aryans. And they came down out of the north and they went into what is now Iran and India. And Zoroaster is descended from them. All There's a whole host of, of great teachers that we can identify, scholars will identify. I suggest if they use this as the pattern, they'll find another pattern in the Ar Aryan line of manifestations. Baha'u'llah unites the two because through Zoroaster, he unites that Eastern group and he's a descendant from that. But also, he is um, a descendant from the Semitic line. So he unites the two. But he draws attention to this line and does not get in and explicitly show the connection on the other line. But we can use this to see the other one. But this is the one we need to understand because I'm suggesting it shows up over and over and over again as having relevance for today. And that's why we're going to get into it. It's not to, it's for an example, there's manifestations of God in North America and in South America. We know that there were manifestations sent all over this planet. They're not all listed. We're not saying they don't have the same value. It's just that their histories and their mode of keeping records are not available to us today. This one is the one Baha'u'llah points out, and I believe there's a reason for it, and that is we can get the pattern clear and then use the pattern to make greater discoveries in the future on how this applies elsewhere. So now we will move to, to quote 24. The prophets of the one, the unknowable God, including Baha'u'llah himself, have all as the channels of God's grace, as the exponents of his unity, as the mirrors of his light, and the revealers of his purpose, been commissioned to unfold to mankind an ever-increasing measure of his truth, of his inscrutable will and divine guidance. Now, basically, I believe he's trying to tell us that it's like a school. Now, just because one school operates on a certain doesn't mean that all other schools are excluded. But you might say the school of God of the Semitic chain has messages in these sequential happenings that are true, and I'm going to say this, for our own personal spiritual journey. They brought the steps of the soul as well as religious truth. And the more we can understand the, the, the lights that they brought, and why they brought and why they were sequential, the wiser and more profound our understanding.